Anti-grav generators. How do they work? Who knows? It's probably some kind of magic. But if this sign is anything to go by, my character is never having children again. Hello fellow Novians and welcome to another episode in this tutorial series. My name is Rob and today we're going to be talking about anti-grav generators or AGGs even though this thing says anti-grav reactor. <laughs> I just actually realized that they're listed as anti-grav generators but this is called an anti-grav reactor. But if you hold H it says anti-grav generator. So who knows? There's a couple of those things in this game where things are named other than what they are. Uh, you know. So let's take a look at this. What does an anti-grav generator do? Well, an anti-grav generator lets you hold your ship in place, um, whether that is in uh, low uh, altitude or high altitude. So if you're in space at, say, like 10,000 kilometers and you turn on your AGG and it's set for 10,000 kilometers, you'll stay at 10,000 kilometers regardless of how much gravity the planet is using to try and pull you back down. Um, they do not work below 1,000 meters on a planet, which is why you see people building freaking towers everywhere. So as you can see, my neighbor over here has decided that they are going to build a, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, five large core wide space tower um, for reasons. Uh, but yeah, that's generally why you see those towers. It's so people don't have to use their thrusters to uh, get up to a high altitude. And over here, you can see my other neighbors. Um, have two anti-grav ships that they're just floating above their base. Um, they haven't fallen out of the sky yet, so, I mean, I guess it works that way. Used to be back in the day that if you did that and you logged off, as soon as you logged back in, your ships would fall out of the sky. So, beware. Uh, it may not be something you want to do to just leave your ships up there like that. All right, but let's talk about the two different parts of anti-grav generators or anti-grav systems. So if we open up our market and we look at anti-grav, that's not how you spell anti, anti-grav, you can see that there are three different anti-grav generators and they are super misleading in terms of what they go to. So Anti-grav generator small goes to a medium core ship. Anti-grav generator medium goes to a large core ship. And anti-grav generator L goes to absolutely nothing. <laughs> so speculation is that maybe sometime they'll release an extra large core for ships and this will go to that. Or it might go to bases if you want to float, float them when they turn on structural integrity and your giant base suddenly falls out of the sky. So do not buy an anti-grav generator L unless you just want to have one to put in a box somewhere because they don't do anything right now. So if you have a extra small or a small core ship, you cannot use an anti-grav generator. You have to have a medium core or a large core ship. So once again, small goes to medium and medium goes to large. So the other part of an anti-grav generator is the anti-grav pulsar. So if you have an anti-grav generator small for a medium core ship, the ship requires six of these. For an anti-grav generator M for a large core ship, it doubles, so you need 12 of these. So if you're using an anti-grav generator M, you need 12. If you're using an anti-grav generator S, you only need six. How do you place them? Well, it doesn't really matter. It might in the future, but for now, you can place them wherever you want. So as we're looking at the Athos here, I have them stuck inside the front here. So they kind of look like cool parts of like the engine cowling or something like that, right? And 
So that's four of them. And then two of them I have sitting here to make it look like this is a teleporter or something for the elevator. So if they had to be in a specific uh, arrangement, this would not work. But uh, the game just says, are there six anti-grav pulsars on the ship? Yes, then we're good to go. If we go into build mode, you can see that these are all linked as well. Um, you see the blue lines here are running to those pulsar, pulsars, pulsars. Uh, so you do have to link them. So the way the generator works is you link the generator to your chair, your command chair, and you link the generator uh, to your pulsars. So all of that has to be linked together in order for it to work. So if you slap an anti-grav generator down and you say, why isn't it working? A, is it connected to your chair? And B, is it connected to the pulsars? Otherwise, your ship will not work. Um, and I do not know what happens if you don't connect the pulsars, but you connect this to the thing. It might still show the overlay, but if you turn off your engines, you'll probably fall to the ground and blow up. So, yes. That is how they work. So as again, this is a small one, right? And they go to those poor starts. So this ship has six of them. And again, it doesn't matter where they go. If you look at like the entree, on, on, Enter 3R, Enter 3R cargo, um, or you go over to the uh, Atlas Ship Museum, you can see a lot of ships that are set up for AGG, and some of them just use them as uh, aesthetics inside. Uh, on that ship, they, they're like opposite the uh, fuel containers, so it kind of like looks like they're doing something to the fuel containers. It's just an aesthetic little look, right? All right, so how do, how do, how does an AGG work? Well, we just talked about how it, functions but it works with both the uh scripted chairs and the are not scripted well scripted the lua controlled chairs so if you're using um, du orbital or arch hud uh, or sagacious is hud or um no i think those are the only three that i know of that that function with the aggs um or this this chair doesn't have any scripting on it um you can do that. So let's hop in this chair right here. This is my space chair for this ship. All right. So over here, you can see on the normal HUD that we have our anti-grav generator um, listed on the thing here. If I hit Alt-G, uh, it turns it off. And if I hit Alt-G again, it turns it on. And um, that is how it functions. It's currently set at base altitude of 300 and such. Um, now, how do you adjust the height in uh, the thing here? I actually have no idea because <laughs> I do not use the AGG um, in this seat. Uh, and if I did, I would put the script on here probably. Um, so yeah, uh, that is, but that is what it looks like in the normal HUD. Um, you can turn it on and off with Alt G again, as I said, and, uh, there is some way to control it. Um, but I am a script junkie, so I never fly the ship in the regular, uh, the regular way it works. All right. So one of the ways to get around that is um, you can set up a AGG script that is not controlled by the chair. Um, there is one online. If you look up um, anti-grav generator script uh, for dual universe, it'll pretty much be the only one that pops up. Um, so you just go to that GitHub page, and I can put a link in the description as well. Um, and you could do something like put it on a screen in front of you, and then you can control the, the height of the AGG with the screen. Otherwise, whoops, meh. Otherwise, um, if you're using either DU Orbital or um, Arch HUD, 
if I get in this seat, you can see it's a lot clearer on when your AGG is on. So right now, you can see right here on my screen, it says AGG on, target altitude 3000, singularity altitude 3000. Singularity altitude is what the current um, height is, right? Or what the what the singularity height is. So on the um, on DU orbital, well, I'm using Arch, Arch HUD, but it, it functions the exact same way. Um, so in this script, if you hold Alt C, uh, you can decrease the target altitude. Like if I put it down to 2858, you'll see the singularity altitude start ticking down. So the singularity altitude is the actual where the actual like um, bubble, I guess singularity bubble is that keeps you afloat. And target altitude is like what you want that singularity altitude to be at. So you always want to aim for the singularity altitude, not the target altitude. Um, and you can see how slow it is at getting to that target altitude. Let me put it back up before it goes anywhere. So I just kind of leave it at 3K, um, and then I use my engines to get up there, and then I can you know, save on fuel or whatever else. Or at 3,000, I can stop my engines and then use my anti-grav generator to lift my ship up above um, space engine height and then do all the warming up of my space engines and everything else and get out uh, away from the planet um, you can go you know up to 10,000 kilometers uh, with the AGG but as I said it's really slow so what some people do with those towers is they uh, they uh, just start their AGG they get in the ship they set a target altitude and then they go make coffee or something else and come back an hour later uh, when the ship is actually out in in uh, in orbit. Um, and that's a way you can lift like really heavy loads uh, with the AGG, right? All right. So um, the way to see that it's functioning with the script right now, it's red, which means it will not do anything. Um, so if I use G to take the ship off, and I can go to um, is it Alt-6, I believe, on this one. Yeah, Alt-6, altitude hold. 62.47 meters. No, that's not what I want. Oh, six, six. That's what I want. All right. Uh, so it's 6-6. Six, six. Break. All right, so let's get airborne. I'm actually going to toggle this off for a second so I can adjust my uh, altitude hold so I'm going to set my altitude hold for 3,000 kilometers let this get up there all right now I can turn my AGG back on and set that for 3,000 kilometers and you can see my uh, my altitude hold is kind of matching um, my AGG target hold so as soon as we get up there, you can see that the script um, turns yellow, which means that I am now within the hold of the anti-grav generator. And I'll wait till my altitude is actually like at 3000 exactly so we don't bounce. And when I say bounce, if you are not use if you're not specifically a level when you stop your ship and you let your AGG take over, It'll start bouncing up and down, so it might do like 100 meters up, 100 meters down, 100 meters up, 100 meters down, which is also a reason that you don't want to leave your ship close to 1,000 meters because it might bounce below 1,000 meters, and if it hits 999 meters, you're falling out the sky because your AGG is no longer working. All right, so we can stop our engines. We can apply our brakes here, and as long as that AGG is on, Um, we are just floating and at this point you can get out of your seat 
Look at that. You can walk around the ship. It will stay there. Um, you know, I can go on top of the ship. I walk around. If I had a ship up here that was like docked to it or a, uh, a hoverboard or a, a magic carpet, um, I could just get on my magic carpet and go uh, down to the planet, maybe load some ore, uh, come back up, etc. Uh, but we can go all over the ship, no problem. Um, and also, it's good to have a um, uh, emergency controller on your ship if you're using an AGG, because that will, if if you accidentally log off or something, um, or if your ship's just floating there, it'll kind of act as a safety to keep it airborne. All right. Um, another thing to keep in mind here. Um, yeah, we're pretty level. We're, we're bouncing a little, I think. We're bouncing, like, up and down about three meters, so it's not that bad of a deal, right? Um, yeah, but you, I can just turn my ship. I if I set my uh, bookmark back to uh, Chimera HQ... I can just turn my ship back towards my destination, you know, just like I would if I was sitting on the ground. And I can just engage my engines now and head back in that direction. Um, so that is pretty much all there is to it. Uh, AGGs let your ship float. It's a good time. Um, right now they don't require any energy or fuel, which they may in the future. Uh, but for now, they are pretty much just a magic thing that keeps your ship floating in the sky. And another thing to keep in mind is always make sure your respawn pod is active. Because if you fall out of the ship, you're going to want to be able to res back up to the ship. Otherwise, your ship is just kind of stuck up there until somebody gives you a little lift um, back to where your ship is hovering in the sky. <laughs> um, so yeah, it does uh, save you on some fuel usage. Um, it's good if you just want to, you know, take a break and hang out. And that's about all I have today for this topic. Um, if you have anything to add to this or how AGGs function or tips and tricks, um, go ahead and drop that in the comments section. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. And don't forget, as always, to subscribe and hit the notification button to be notified every time I put out a new video. If there's something that you'd like to see me cover, again, please drop that in the comments section and I will get to making a video on it as best I can. Right now, I am still learning the ins and outs of uh, PvP, uh, but I will be making a neat little how to avoid PvP uh, video coming up soon. Hopefully in the next few days or so, uh, as soon as I get my warp shuttle built, because I don't want to waste the warp cells on something this big. If you're interested in the ship, by the way, um, it is the newest ship from Chimera Shipworks, you can VR over to Camara Shipworks showroom. Take a look, buy a blueprint, or contact me or anyone else in Chimera uh, to get one spawned as a token. Otherwise, I will see you out there in space. Stay safe, my friends.